Okay, I'm Wayne Gilbert and I am the uh, proprietor and owner of the G Spot Contemporary Art Space. And this is an invited exhibition by Jeffrey and Brian Wheeler, who are brothers. They originated out of Brian, excuse me, Lubbock, Texas, uh, and had been sort of based in Lubbock for as long as I've known them, since I think it's about 19 and 99 maybe. Uh, at which I had, uh, for one reason or the other, had an opportunity to meet them and began to immediately like their dedication to art and their contemporary uh, thinking behind it and also bringing to the table a good combination of contemporary art and Texas motifs, so to speak. So these show will be a combination of either their single work and or collaborations uh, they've done together and I think if you well, notice you'll see a good reflection of, uh, of some sort of, uh, I'd like to say, amalgamated America with a Texas slant. I'm Jeff Wheeler here at the G-Spot. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about a show that's currently up uh, of me and my brother's work, Brian Wheeler. We are together known as the Wheeler Brothers, formerly of Lubbock, Texas. But now I live in Splendora and he still lives in Lubbock, so we do some collaborations through the mail. Um, we've got some of those here. Um, tonight and then also we do work on our own and we've got a, a healthy sample. This one is one of our four collaborations we have in the show. These are brand new collaborations. We do them by the mail now. And um, let's see, on this one I started out with these Cezanne bathers. Just four hints of that. Up there, what else? I bet that's all I saw. Oh, and these girls were started. And then I sent it off to him. They were just the outlines. And then he answered back with all the stuff you see that he did. He uh, finished some of the girl. He put this in the background. This is all collage. Added these girls here in the Arby's. He's famous for that. He did these things and sent it back to me. And then I finished it up. Usually we go two rounds. We also did this one through the mail. Another um, kind of fun fact about our collaborations is we've never once had to talk about it or feel like we need to erase something or paint over something. So this is our conversation here on the paper. Usually, like I said before, two swipes. On this one, I started out with the E, with this picture of this lady. It's an old photograph I just glued right on there. And this piece of paper here with an old drawing from a sketchbook and a little bit of a collage, and that's all I did. I sent it to him just like that. Maybe this, uh, these flowers too were here. And then he answered back with his little vignette there, turning this lady into a track star and having her friends, the Pioneer Meat Market down here. And then he sent it back to me and then I put old ladies' heads off your books back in that lady. And then he put the Jasper Johns um, target on this guy here. And um, yeah, that's collaboration number two. All right, collaboration number three is Old Course East. This one is really different than when I started it. I sent him a piece of uh, kind of big white paper just with the Cezanne bathers on it, and that was it. And what he ended up doing here is cutting them out and gluing them on an old piece of board that he had a drawing already started from years ago that he didn't like anymore. And then all of a sudden, we have a whole new look at, and something that's totally different than what I had anticipated, which is a big part of why we like to collaborate. In our own work, we never know where it's headed, but when we collaborate, we really don't know where it's going. And this one was totally different than when I started it. Um, it takes into account some of his older pieces that he doesn't like anymore. Shake it all up, and there we have collaboration number three. One of the subjects I'm really most interested in right now in my own work is trying to find the middle ground between um, exactly realistic and exactly abstract. I think this is one that kind of hits it right in the, uh, the nail on the head. This is an afternoon in the canyons out by Chinati Hot Springs. And I can take you to the part here in the canyon where it looks exactly like that, but also it's very abstracted. Um, these moments don't come up very often, and I don't get to do very many of these, but when I do, this is what I most enjoy doing is finding that moment where you can find the exact halfway point between real and abstract. This is another example of one of my pieces and it also is an example of things that come to me through my journeys that I end up using in my art. This frame was in my grandma's house the whole time she was alive. It had a cheesy flower print in there. But I grew up knowing this frame so when it came to me I knew I was going to use it. Part of my, the fun for me is giving life new life to old frames and old yearbooks and old um, paper and vintage everything. And so this started with my grandma's frame. And then I came across this picture of this boy and the girl 
and just started putting all my stuff on it. These are um, images from the sketchbooks. This is from a casino I was at in Montana. This uh, picture of the um, outside from the inside is from a sketchbook drawing I did in Cheyenne, Wyoming one year when I was stuck there on Thanksgiving Day. I could actually show you that same view. It's really there. Um, all the yearbooks that I collect end up getting cut out. These are just scenes from, old, from bars on, on the road. And um, this one is called Somewhere Near Cheyenne, Wyoming. This is a little collage entitled Scenic View Ahead. Um, let's see, about five years ago, and for a, a whole two years, I started collecting vintage papers and yearbooks and albums and journals and checks and everything I could find in antique stores, and I had no reason why. And then suddenly, after two years, the next day I became a collage artist, and it all became clear why I had the big pile of stuff over there. And this is an example of that. So I would use the vintage paper to start off first, so I'm not working on white. And then I would just start using all the different things that I found. This is an example of a, a whole bag of characters that were already cut out of um, old catalogs that some lady had done for me. She didn't know that, but I found it at the antique store and it was just packed with different figures. And so I started using them in all my um, drawings. So it's all about, um, First off, the images are from my sketchbooks, like the hot tubs and uh, mountains. But then everything else is about things that I find along the way in antique stores and everything. So it all becomes very autobiographical, both in my own story, but also the things that I come across. Jeff Wheeler coming at you from the G-Spot in historic Houston Heights. This is the biggest one I have in my show right now that is with my brother. And once again, I can't say the title. It's too fancy. But I want to tell you a little bit about this painting. Um, I like to let the images come to me in my daily practice and living, but I also like the, the uh, materials to come to me. And this is an example. This big brown piece of paper blew and hit me and stuck on my grill in my car in Lubbock, Texas last year. And I knew right away that was a perfect um, piece of paper that I needed to put something on it. It's already, I think this big crease came in it when I hit my car. I took it right home. Instead of starting with white, I had something that had lots of history and track marks on it to start with. And then every once in a while I have to try to throw all my tricks onto one, so that includes abstract, and that includes all the portraits I like to do, travels from my sketchbooks, um, things that I find. I found this at Nancy Kingholtz's studio in Hope, Idaho, when I spent the summer there, so it's imbibed with a lot of good vibes. Jeff Wheeler coming at you from G-Spot in the middle of my, me and my brother's show here in Historic Heights in Houston. I couldn't stop talking without at least mentioning this one. Rarely do I go political, but man, I'm burning up like everybody else. Had to do something. This is the exact moment he came down to tell us he was running, and it's called Dude Descending a Staircase. Right in the middle of my uh, art show with my brother that I can't even say the title because it's so fancy, but this is an example of one of his fancy paintings. In fact, this is my favorite one in the, in the show. Um, you're going to be seeing him and hearing him talk about some of the ones where he throws all his images together. But for a lot of years, I've also liked when he does this, when he keeps all this, does, uses all the same images that he uses, but he separates them out and puts them in weird configurations and leaves it up to us to try to figure out what the heck it all means. This one's one of my favorites.